Okay, so I think what we're going to go for here is we still have a couple of side quests remaining here. The Investigate Facility, which I believe we found out about when we were on Pharos. Found a confidential transmission while on Pharos. It's unclear exactly what's going on, but it appears Exogeny sent some kind of sample to a research facility on Nauticrux. That's one thing, and then so that was a somewhat recent acquisition. Whereas UNC Besiege Base we've had, not forever. This was the one that we got uh, when we reached 75% Paragon points, or 80% or something along those lines. Uh, so it was a relatively late addition, but that being said, I mean, we still reached that threshold quite a while ago. So these are the two things we have left. I'm thinking we maybe go with Investigate Facility first, and then the Siege Base. And of course, we're, uh... We don't have too much stuff left, and so we may be turning to Vermeyer in the not-so-distant future. As well as, one other thing that we probably mentioned a little bit, we were looking at our galaxy map previously. Something that we may end up choosing to do before Vermeyer. I'm not sure if we'll do it before or after. But, uh, that being Asteroid... 57 here, which is the DLC, Bring Down the Sky. So that's something, that's sort of, it's maybe not as big, it's definitely not as big as a main quest in terms of just the total time commitment, but it's a relatively significant thing that we'll be looking to do sometime in the not so distant future as well. Uh, but either way, look, well, here I am saying, oh, let's, let's make sure we do this, this mission, but uh, let me double check where it is. The Investigate Facility is on Nauticrux, which is in the Vostok system of the Maroon Sea Cluster. I think that's where we are right now, at least the Maroon Sea Cluster, that is. Let's see. We're just at Chaska, which is in the Matano system. Yes, this is Maroon Sea, and we are looking for- yep, Vostok. Okay, let's head over here then. Okay, so what do we have here? We have Clomarthu. And Clomarthu has a reducing atmosphere of methane and nitrogen. The surface is hot and mainly composed of the game tabbing out on me. Of sodium with deposits of uranium. In terms of size and orbit, Clomarthu is a virtual twin of Earth. Whoa! In terms of... Oh, size and orbit. Okay, I was gonna say. Uh, if that was also applicable to other characteristics, then one would think it would be a pretty nice prospect for uh, colonizing it. Uh, but it utterly lacks life. Huh. Well, it's hot. 95 degrees Celsius. That's definitely not the average temperature on Earth. Gravity is very similar. Atmospheric pressure very similar. But yeah, what was the... The atmosphere is methane and nitrogen. Nitrogen is obviously the primary component of Earth's atmosphere. Methane, not so much. And that may be partially why it's so hot, is because, uh, well, that is a powerful greenhouse gas. But, anyways. Looks like it, we've got an active oh. distress beacon on the planet. Not a crux. Commander. No message, just a locator signal. Okay. Uh, sounds like this may be the place we're looking to go. Nautocrux is a verdant world with abundant water, temperate climate, and thick nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere. Sounds great. And a rich ecosystem. Yeah. Sounds good. It would seem to be perfect for life. Uh-oh. There's a catch, isn't there? The relatively high percentage of oxygen makes humans feel energized and alive. Though it has also allowed insect analogs to grow to frightful sizes. Isn't that a thing that happened on Earth? I saw, what was it, like a, a tear zoo video once where... It was talking about how back, I don't know how long ago, hundreds of millions of years ago on Earth when there was far more oxygen in the atmosphere, you think, oh, that sounds great, Just breathe more easily. But uh, no, it also apparently meant that uh, insects in particular were significantly larger. And you know, on second thought, maybe I'll pass on the high oxygen atmosphere in that case. Hence the frightful sizes they're talking about here. So unfortunately, Nauticrox is a case of almost, not quite. Thunderstorms are as common as on Earth, but in Nauticrox's thicker, oxygen-rich atmosphere, they are deafening and spark constant wildfires. Ah, uh, so the atmosphere itself, that, yeah, like, that's one thing in, with Earth, is the atmosphere is at least, uh, it's not conductive of electricity. So, I mean, well, I guess, 
don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. That's kind of just something that we take for granted. But, uh, so that would affect how and where lightning strikes, okay? And to what extent it can cause fires. So, let's see. More damning, however, are the large and ubiquitous tufts of pollen that float on the high-pressure air. Okay. It's terrible for allergies? Humans and other oxygen-breathing species... Uh, in humans and other oxygen-breathing species, they cause severe or lethal allergic reactions. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. And otherwise, gravity, almost exactly like Earth, temperature, seems more or less perfect. Thick atmosphere, but maybe not totally unbearable. Just, uh, comes to the downside, as the de description here says. So we will head over there, of course, eventually. But first, let's explore all the other areas around here, including this asteroid belt. Just to see if there's anything else that we want to make sure that we get to before we do land on that planet. Oh, I was about to say time to give up hope on that asteroid belt, but no, there is a metallic asteroid. Which is, uh, well, it is metal rich, as it turns out. And it has a heavy metal of some variety. Scans the asteroid field revealed a large deposit of palladium. Okay. And we've got a couple more planets here. We have Alco. The geological properties of Alco have been scanned from orbit, but little else is known about it. A fairly typical mix of outer system, terrestrial, rock, and ice, Alco has a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its crust is composed of silicates and water ice with deposits of aluminum. Unregistered starship traffic has been recorded in the vicinity of this planet. Travel is not advised. Hmm. Interesting. That would suggest that there's at least some reason for the unidentified objects or, you know, traffic to head over in that direction. And we have Pateton. Not to be confused with Potato. A rather small hydrogen helium gas giant, Potaton's atmosphere contains large quantities of chlorine. Okay, let's survey it. And we had a matrix writings. Scans of Potaton revealed a strange unmanned vessel in orbit around the planet. Tally brought it on board and determined it was Asari made, but very old. She discovered several ancient artifacts inside the vessel, including one of Matriarch Delinaga's writings. Okay, sounds good to me. In which case, I believe that just leaves us with Nauticrux here. And, uh, interesting that it did say that there's this highly, uh, toxic, allergic reaction inducing substance in the air that people breathe in, and therefore that makes this not as good of a place for colonization as it might otherwise appear at first glance. Although, that description really sounds like it would have some kind of hazard. It does not seem to have one. At least it doesn't have one labeled, I mean, on occasion there is some kind of hazard, even when uh, there's none listed. So, I think we're safe in that regard. Let's land. It does remind me, at least from the description, of, I think, another planet that we were visiting somewhat recently, Elatania, Elatania, the place where we saw the space monkeys and had the one of the two infinite uh, Paragon uh, glitches. Also, Verdant World, except that one, I think, did have some kind of uh, hazard and similar idea for it as well. I think it was some kind of thing floating in the atmosphere that they said was toxic to breathe in. But anyways, as for what we want here for a team... I think... Hmm. I think we maybe prioritize crowd control here. In which case, Yara probably rises to the top of the list. And then... Maybe outside of her... Rex give us a little bit more crowd control while also simultaneously giving us some tankiness, survivability stuff that we don't really have from Liara or... Our own character. So, I think we go for this. Alright, let's take a look here. First, at our, well, I would say map, but I do immediately see that we have some people. Leveled up since we last used them. Wow. 
five levels for Rex? When was the last time we used Rex? I mean, he's been one of our most uh, popular people to use, so I'm surprised. But I guess we had what? We did have Pharos, in which we obviously were there for a while and gained several levels in the process, so I suppose maybe we just haven't used him since. So with those levels, five points, I'm thinking we go up to Master Warp. Then we'll have one more point left. Could use to upgrade his barrier for 400 points damage reduction. It's 420, additional 20. It's not, not that exciting. Versus upgrading combat armor would be the really only other alternative, which would improve damage reduction and hardening by 2%. Doesn't sound like a lot, but I don't know, that might be more versatile. Yeah, it's actually interesting because shield boost, it's kind of similar to barrier in some ways, right? So this restores your existing shields, whereas barrier gives you additional shields on top of what you already have. Does also, oh well. The upgrade version improves the recharge time. Yeah. So, huh. What is your. Let's see, do we have a sense as to what your starting shield value is? Because. Take a quick look at his gear here. Just to get a sense of. You no, know, is 20 incremental uh, shields a big deal with his existing armor? Or would we much rather make it so that he can get his existing shields back more quickly? Yeah, his existing shields right now are uh, over 420. So I think it might be better to actually prioritize the, uh, the combat armor. And, well, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get all the way up to Master Shield Boost here. Perhaps not. But I think that is perhaps still better at this stage than Barrier. I mean, if we... Early game, maybe barrier would be better when you don't have great armor and so 400 points of extra damage. It's like, oh man, we're basically doubling our health pool. But uh, I think we're late enough in the game at this point that we have strong armor and therefore maximizing the effectiveness of the shields from that armor is actually better. So we get the master warp, and in this case, that means what? More damage over time, going from 8 to instead 10. I did not remember that this had a radius, to tell you the truth. A six meter radius, that's that's somewhat significant, in fact. For whatever reason, I just thought of this as a single target skill. Duration of 20 seconds versus 13 seconds, so yeah, okay, that starts to add up a little bit more. And recharge time should get faster as well. 50 seconds, 40 seconds? I mean, at that point, bear in mind that we should have a lot of recharge uh, speed improvements, both on gear and from even achievements. And so with that, actually I don't remember if the achievements uh, for cooldown recovery things affect just Shepard or all our teammates as well. But uh, either way, I think our recharge time is actually going to be much faster than 40 seconds. So it's interesting to see if it's such a long duration ability, there's a non-zero chance that you will actually be able to use this ability a second time before the initial round expires. It should be kind of fun. But then, as we were saying, let's put the additional uh, combat armor on here for the damage reduction and hardening. Then everyone else is good, yeah, because we've been using Liara a fair bit as of late. So let's double check our assignment here. Yeah, we do have an update. So we've reached or received a generic distress call coming from a small research facility at an by exogening in the Maroon Sea Cluster. So we'll just explore the colony. The colony is a strong word. Investigate the facilities on the planet Nautocrux in the Vostok system of the Maroon Sea Cluster for clues. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about a fair bit how it seemed interesting how similar this planet's conditions were to that of Earth. Felt like maybe that would mean that uh, could be a, a good prospect for colonization, but then the, the description was all like, not so fast, maybe not. So, uh, I don't know. The fact that they're using the word colony is... I don't know what to make of that. But, let's, uh... Okay. Let's maybe... 
That's just a random anomaly. This is a science facility, which is one would assume based on the exclamation point. Primary thing we're looking for. It is on the sort of the opposite side that we're on, so it does beg the question if we're going to do our usual clockwise or counterclockwise rotation, then do we just do that partway through? Or do we deliberately sort of double back, get or do everything else and then double back to get this at the end, which is usually what I prefer? So if we are to do that, what would be the preferred methodology? You're like, this looks like this is going to be kind of hard to navigate. This place looks like it's going to be rather hilly. I feel like we go counterclockwise and then maybe we'll overshoot facility deliberately. Go get the debris and this anomaly and then we'll, we'll pop back down to finish things up. And we also see, yeah, there's signs of enemies here on our minimap. Can't tell from this range what exactly those are. They are actually not that far away from us. What do we have here? Can you tell? Might be further up. Where are these these enemies? Down on the itch over here? Seems like there's a lot of them. Whoa! Hold on. What do we have here? Oh, um, well, that name looks familiar. I do recall some creatures or creepers of such a variety. Well, I mean, what if we just, like, blast them to smithereens? Hmm, don't mind if I do. Oh, I'm sorry, were you next? Two for one? Oh, that guy's still flying. Okay, this... Let's take a closer look here. This looks almost like an exit. Some kind of facility. This looks like some kind of, uh... Minerals that normally we'd be able to harvest, but, uh... Not this time? I mean, it's not showing up on our map. I'm not entirely sure what to make of that, then. Looks like there may be another group of enemies here, and based on how numerous... They appear to be, that might be another group of, yep, creepers. In fact, that guy's not very far away. Well, we were zooming in on our weapon, but still. We were close enough, we appear to have gotten their attention. Hello, goodbye. Okay. That appears to be the last of them here. It's actually the edge of the map as well, and there's... Oh, that's the Rachni song, as it turns out. But uh, there's some kind of facility here. By facility, I mean, like, building. By building, I mean, like, storage shed. But most importantly, in said storage shed thing, here's to be some loot. Ooh, this is uh, not an easy one. Hold on. It's a hard decryption. But I suppose it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. Ooh. Ooh, okay, we found our opening. Ooh, and look at this. So we are continuing to get the occasional level 10 item, which is nice. Unfortunately, in this case, though, it's, uh, well, not a very strong item, because that is a bad manufacturer, so, uh, missed opportunity there. But good sign, I think, just to see that that is still, uh, possible for us to get those level 10 items. And here... Korean armor, I think also just bad manufacturer, so it's probably not terribly interesting. Last one. I would just love if we could get maybe one, I don't know exactly how many levels it would take, maybe even two, before, like here we see another level 10 item, but it still seems like the majority of items that we get are level nine. So I'd love if we could get one, maybe two more levels, so we can consistently make it so that, uh, Level 10 is the level of gear that we get. Maybe not all the time, but most of the time. When we're looting random items like that. We're close. And you know, there was a time when it seemed like... 
it was almost impossible for us to get, I mean, obviously there's a long time, which it was quite literally impossible for us to get level 10 gear out of any sort of uh, chess. But then I think possibly as far back as two or maybe even three levels ago, we got like, one level 10 item. And we're like, oh man, that's good news. So we have been waiting a little bit for the level 10 items to drop more regularly. And I think we're starting to notice some difference. It's not just a complete one-time thing. Now it is perhaps, you know, when you, you loot and you get three or four items, we'll get one of those to be a level 10 item. We got some gold over here. Let's nab this. Yeah, so maybe, you know, we get one more level and then it suddenly becomes a 50-50 between level 9 and level 10. And we get no level and then suddenly it's the vast majority of the time it's level 10. That'd be great. I don't know exactly how the math works on that stuff. Other than just, like, of course, generally speaking, you gain more levels, the higher level here you're going to get. Okay, let's take a look at our map here, because we have now gone up all the way to the northwestern corner. So let's go southwest now. To this corner. And based on our encounter previously, with those Thorian Creepers, we now... Theoretically, may have a. Uh oh, don't fall into these bottomless pits. Get out. I certainly hope so. Hold on. Climb at an angle. There we go. Whoa, okay. But yeah, I think based on the enemies that we encountered previously, those Thorian Creepers, that may be an indication of what we're. What we should expect going forward, given how we saw two groups of them. That would rule out other stuff, but it does seem like there has already been a bit of a theme. We get up here. Cool. Okay, great. So, of course, like to keep the elevation while we have it. So that way, if we do need to be up high, we. Uh, don't need to climb back up, but, uh, I spoke too soon. I jinxed it. So that is now precisely what we need to do. But hopefully we can go around this way. Make it a little bit easier for us to carry onward. That looks climbable. It's hard to tell when we're in such a hilly area. And yeah, now I think we're just going down here. But yeah, it's hard to tell how much ground you're actually covering because so much of it is vertical, not horizontal. Like, are we are we close to the edge of the map now? Okay, yes, it does look like we are. Here's our marker, and not really seeing anything down here. So let's carry on. And now we will start head eastward. And that will start to bring us closer to the science facility, although we may deliberately start moving upward in the northerly direction before we end up reaching that and basically just go to the debris, then whatever this anomaly is, and then go down. We'll see. Of course, depends a bit on what, if anything, we find along the way. Boom. Uh. Hold on. Before we go down, let's see if we can stay up. Okay, looks like we've got some minerals at the very least. Uh. Let me keep 
for elevation, because it looks like that stuff is a little bit more to the left here. Kinda like so. Ooh, don't drop. Don't drop now. Not entirely sure if these minerals are going to be on this elevation. Oh, we're dropping down at least a little bit here. Or if they're going to be down below. Just to play it safe. Let's try to stay up. A little bit more gradual if we get slightly further to the right. Back it up. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Build some momentum. So it's a bit of a runway here. Or, or not. Never mind. Never. Hold on. Whoa, Mako. Nope, 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 nope. You got a mind of your own. Okay. Apparently we're doing this. So close. So close. I can taste it. Turn the wheels slightly. This is backfire. No, it's not. This is where I want to be. Maybe. Possibly. Kind of. Sort of. A little bit. But not exactly. Angle it. Angle it. He's done it. He's done it. It has been done. Confirmed. Alright, so the minerals are not far. Are they up here? They are. They are. So it, uh... In the theory... Did pay off for that. Let's we'll run them over real quick. Don't mind if we do. On my way. Let's go over here. Huzzah! It's cobalt. It does look a lot like gold. Did already get gold on this planet already. Is that even? know if that ever happens. You get the same exact mineral twice on the same planet. Maybe? I mean, again, now that there's actually any functional difference between any of the different heavy metals, light metals, earth metals, or gases, you know, one heavy metal is the same as all other heavy metals, at least from a quest completion standpoint. Experience and money, credits, earns standpoint, all the same as well. Alright, uh, well, I guess we are going down here. Just a bit. Uh, well, it was nice knowing you. Get back up this way-ish. Kind of, sort of. Looks like the edge of the map is close here. Maybe. Let's go a little bit around that. Not worry too much about all of our hopes and dreams. Because it looks like our target is right around here. And at least at the moment, this does look fairly empty. So we can get a tiny bit further. Anything up here? It's not really looking like it. I think we're probably good here. In which case... Let's take another look at our map. Because if we were to go... Yeah, I mean, in theory, in theory, we probably could go a little bit further east, but we might need to go north and then southeast. But, uh, thing is, in theory, if we went more or less straight up, we would get to the science facility. Just curious to see if there is a clear sign. That appears to be it right there, in fact. Those little lights does look like it's in a very 
mountainous area, but this is almost like a little pathway here. It sort of winds up to it. So, in theory, that's probably the way over there, whether we are going straight to the science facility or if we're just going beyond it. So we may take that route, this uh, route here, no matter what. So we basically go here, and it's almost like a nice little ramp. Pathway, okay, there are enemies outside of it. If we're going to drive right past it, then we might fight whenever those enemies are. And like I said, based on what we saw before, I think there is a somewhat reasonable chance those enemies may be more Thorian Creepers. And so the other thing worth noting, or at least mentioning, is that this whole system that we are currently in, the Maroon Sea, uh, or cluster really, the Maroon Sea cluster, is only available after you complete Theros. And perhaps the reason for that is because, yes, we are seeing a bunch of these Thorian Creepers, and of course, we first learned about them on Theros. You get sort of the backstory behind them, and so that would be kind of strange if you did just encounter these random dudes on this random planet and didn't think much of them at the time, and then suddenly you go to a main quest and everybody's making a huge deal of them, you're like, oh yeah, we saw those guys a long time ago. What's the big deal? That would kind of take away from the, the impact of first encountering them on the main quest. So I imagine that's probably the primary reason for that, although there technically, I think there was one, one uh, mission that we did prior to this, in which we were actually encountering some uh, Thorian Creepers. I think it was on a spaceship. This looks like this might be, yep, Crash Probe. Likely what we're looking for. But yeah, actually, a similar story in the case of Novaria. There were there were some areas that we were not able to go to uh, before finishing Novaria. I forget what the, it's basically the same thing there's, in that there's one cluster cannot visit before you uh, finish Novaria. I don't remember which one it is off the top of my head, at least by name, but uh, I think the idea there was basically those are going to be all the uh, Rachni missions, or at least Rachni-centric missions, because, of course, a similar story there where you're theoretically first learning about the Rachni in that mission on Novaria. And then we get shield interface. That's fine. Kinetic coil. Getting more weapon upgrades. Always a welcome sight to see. And, uh, you'll notice here, a bit of a familiar face, familiar face is, as we have, actually we can't interact with this guy, that's not even shown us their names, but, uh, well, they are space cows, the likes of which we saw previously on a planet in which there was actually the Shifty Cow. I do not believe any of these space cows qualify as a Shifty Cow. I believe there's only one such special Shifty Cow who actually seals your credits when you look away from them and, and allow them to go right up next to you. So these ones, comparatively much safer, even though at times it does feel like they're kind of following us. But like, we can stand here and see if turn ourselves away from it. We see any credit numbers going down the bottom right corner. Doesn't look like it. I think they, they're innocent. Just innocent little space cows. Don't mind them. So that was this debris here. But then we also have this question mark here. Let's mark that over in that direction. Past the space cows. Wave goodbye. Although, in theory, we might actually be back here in the not-so-distant future. Once we do finish checking out what this is, probably head over to the base research facility after that, and, uh... That may require that we go back here. Oh, that was not the most effective way to do that. Um... Up here?
Let's get up higher. Yeah, this is definitely not one of the easier planets to navigate. Certainly rather steep, these cliff sides. And uh, it's not just like they're in the middle of nowhere, they are in many cases, they're right on top of the things that we are trying to get to, or right in between the things that we are trying to get to. not just here for show, we do kinda sorta legitimately need to go over them. Oh, hold on. Before we do that. Okay. Scout it, ugh, scout it out. Looks like it's down in this direction, which would strongly suggest that it is Probably below us, but I would like to be absolutely certain of that before we actually drop down. That's uh, as we were just saying, not the easiest thing to get back up here, but uh, well, apparently it's down there. I think I see it, or at least see something. Can't zoom in at this angle, but uh, Geronimo! And we are falling so long that we can boost ourselves again. Several times over at that. Okay. Uh, what do we have here? Ancient debris. Okay. Let's check it out. Okay, we can recover it. Sure. It's like a nice opening over here. Oh, okay. It's a little slow there and almost lost it, but here we go. Turn insignia requ uh, recovered. This escape pod is half buried in material. It has washed down from the mountains. Though it has obviously been here for centuries, the computer still has power. Wonder how that works. Linking in with your hard suit, you recover a batch of files containing data on the Tarachia colony. Yeah, okay. Sure. Hey, are we still in? Maximum money right now? You're not. Okay. I was gonna say, does that money mean anything this stage, or have we already overflown our coffers? The answer is, well, we do have some additional money we can earn here, and it, it would actually help us. So that sounds good to me. It's not like it's a complete waste to do stuff like that, from a money standpoint at least. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm not sure we've necessarily been down in the middle here. I mean, what, we started, like, here, I think? So let's let's maybe just check the middle, like so, see if we run into anything along the way, and then we'll loop around and finish at a science facility. I think that'll be the plan. Pressure jaw. Question mark? Uh, not this time, it doesn't seem. Okay, but eventually things are gonna get a little trickier. So this is like the one flat area on the entire planet. Everything else is uh, significantly more topographically complicated. So this is not bad, actually. If we go this way, hold on, just to make sure this is more or less in the direction we want to go. Uh, well, not exactly, but if it helps us get up higher, then it might still be worth doing. It might have also just been that we are kind of facing a bit of a strange direction as we were climbing up the side of that mountain, and in truth, we're pointed a little bit more in the direction that we are actually looking to go long term than it would have first appeared. Uh, to well, this is, this is not, not looking great anymore, climbing this stuff. This is, uh, well, rather steep. Mako says, no problem, uh, at least until I say that, and now it is having serious problems, and very quickly losing elevation. I'm fighting. I'm trying to fight. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it.
maybe... Oh, I was gonna say over there. But, uh... There was a part that looked like it was not so steeply inclined. But, uh, that's after you drive up the 90 degree angle. So, I don't know about that. On second thought, uh, you know... Our planned route... May not be the best idea after all. We may need to double back, and then, of course, where we eventually got here, initially got here, because we did drop down off one of those mountain areas. So, uh, not necessarily sure we could even go back up the way we dropped down. Thanks, gravity. That'd actually be interesting. If, uh, because we get a measure of the gravity on every planet that we land on. That'd be kind of cool if uh, gravity on the planets that you were driving around on actually scaled based on what the value you saw in the description was. So like on planets where there's a really low gravity number, you, uh, this backfired. Um, but anyways, on planets where there's a really low gravity number, you, know, you try jumping like this, and you actually go significantly further. That side looked like we went really far, we did, but that was largely because we were on a strange angle there. So that'd be cool on the planets where there's low gravity, but then on the other hand, it might feel horrendously awful on the planets that have really high gravity. Where you're like, I can't jump at all. What am I supposed to do? I mean, feels like there are very few times in which you actually strictly need to jump. So maybe it'd still be fine if we just take away what is a uh, only a small trick up your sleeve. Whereas, on the low gravity planets, you might actually have that ability strong enough that it could be much more of a factor than one would normally have it be. But, uh, okay, I think now we need to, we just need to get out of here. It's clearly, I don't think this is going to work going this direction. I think we back it up and try to find an entirely different route. Because it seems like we kind of just found... An impenetrable wall of mountains 